Soccer players may be living the dream, but many struggle to get where they are today. Kevin De Bruyne is no different. The midfielder for Manchester City recently shared an emotional account of how as a young child he was shunned by his family and even chased out of his house. So what impact did this have on him and his career? How did he become the successful footballer we know of today? Well, let's find out. One of the most sought after athletes on the planet is Kevin De Bruyne. He is regarded as one of the Premier League's best players playing for Manchester City and is also having success with the Belgian national team. Since his 54 million pound transfer from Wolfsburg to Manchester City in 2015, KDB has established himself as one of the top players in world football. But he has opened up about his past when he was a shy 15 year old at Genk that changed his life. He was born on June 28, 1991, one of a few white ethnic groups in Belgium. Early on, everyone recognized De Bruyne as a talented and exceptional child who was destined for greatness. Little Kevin began playing football in his hometown of Ghent in Drongen, Belgium, where he lived with his parents. He got the game off to a strong start. Since his early start, the Belgian's international rise has been meteoric. It resulted from two key qualities. First, hard work, and second, determination. Kevin De Bruyne's admirable commitment to achieving greatness led to his first taste of fame. His dedication to his youth club resulted in a lot of success, which was followed by media attention. He was regarded as Belgian football's future. Due to their waning popularity, Belgium grew weary of its veteran players during this time. They were never successful in football, and a grassroots revolution in football was required for the nation. That's the time Kevin was suggested as a youngster who could lead such. The wonder child constantly imagined himself in front of the media. Before and after each of his games, he would participate in a number of interview sessions. Scouts interested in the Belgian youth football system also followed his meteoric rise. He was desired by every youth group. Kevin advanced quickly and rose to prominence as one of the nation's top young football players. However, before all of this, he had to endure some trying times in his life at just 15 years. De Bruyne had been signed by Genk for their academy and was already displaying his undeniable talent. The Belgian midfielder had to leave home when he was young because Genk was 150 kilometers from his hometown of Drongen. De Bruyne was placed with a foster family by the club so he could live in Genk. During this time, he learned how to maintain his independence, and by the end of the year, Kevin was capable of managing himself. Despite receiving little pay, he managed what he had. He claimed that his parents taught him how to manage himself. To him, he didn't spend a lot of money because he didn't have lots of free time. He would save it for when he wants to do something or go on vacation. At the time, he mostly spent the season at home and made healthy food for himself. And even to this day, it seems as though he is always content with what he has. At the end of the season, De Bruyne went home to visit his family for a few months, but things didn't turn out as expected. The city star would never see the foster family again. He walked in the door and could see his mother was crying. He thought maybe someone had died. That's the time his mother said the words that probably shaped his whole life. She replied that the foster family didn't want him anymore because of who Kevin was. The foster parents saw Kevin as someone who was too quiet and they couldn't interact with him. This was the time he was surprised. Never once were there any issues. He'd always remained alone in his room. He never bothered anyone, but they waved him off as if nothing was wrong. De Bruyne said that it was that precise moment that he decided he was going to prove everyone wrong and make it to the top. His foster parents also informed the club that they didn't want him anymore. Moreover, they didn't wish to pay for additional foster families. This rejection would later serve as the Belgian's inspiration. For hours he kicked the ball against the fence and he recalls saying out loud, everything is going to be okay in two months. I'm going to be in the first team, no matter what. I'm not going back home a failure, no matter what. From this time, De Bruyne played like a man on a mission. When he returned to Genk after the summer, he scored five goals, shocking the entire field. 
De Bruyne's situation improved with encouragement and support, and his former foster family had a change of heart. The foster parents finally showed up at the club one day, and the woman approached him as if everything had been a big mistake, saying something to the effect of that they wanted him to come back. Maybe he should have laughed at it, but he didn't. They had seriously injured him, so he just responded with a no. However, in spite of the unfortunate circumstances, De Bruyne did learn from them. In the end, he admits that he should have just said thank you. That experience was the fuel for his career. He made his debut for the Belgian national team that same year, and everyone there was immediately impressed. Vincent Kompany even remarked that by the end of their first training session together, the players were exchanging comments like, Did you see that? He's only 19 and already the team's best player. He technically could have played for Burundi instead because his mother was born there in Africa. I'm curious why he didn't. Despite his success, De Bruyne hasn't changed at all, so don't think otherwise. His time at Genk was filled with odd circumstances. Then in 2012, he became so frustrated one day with his team's poor performance that he used the post-match press conference to say, I'm ashamed of my teammates, and I suggest to those who don't have a desire to play to just leave. At the age of 19, he felt the need to confront the team's star player, Eliana Varda, to complain that he didn't work hard enough in training. De Bruyne, though, would be the one to depart, signing for Chelsea after they were so impressed by his performances that they planned to make him the new Frank Lampard. But first, he would go on loan to Werder Bremen. There, he quickly established himself as one of the greatest players in the history of the Bundesliga. De Bruyne was simple and somehow that was even more impressive. Even with Bremen flirting with relegation, De Bruyne pulled off 10 goals and 9 assists and casually accepted the award for Young Player of the Year. It was now time to focus and take over the Premier League. De Bruyne, however, had trouble focusing that season because it just so happened that year that his girlfriend had an extramarital affair with Thibodeau Courtois, a former teammate from the academy and an international player. Although, to be fair, she would make sure to say that she did it as a form of revenge because, allegedly, De Bruyne had cheated on her months earlier. However, she wasn't very polite about it when she confirmed the entire scandal to the press and made sure to say that Courtois had given her more in one night than De Bruyne had given her in three. Nevertheless, De Bruyne would be traded after just half a season at Chelsea, having only managed one assist and no goals at that point. His form had fallen off when he needed to perform the most, and Mourinho had been harsh with him. And because the press frequently referred to him as a difficult person, his past almost cost him his career at Chelsea. But although the rejection fueled his ambition, he eventually joined Manchester City and helped the team win more than five English championships. And most of the time, he is always ranked as one of the best players with the most goal assist in the English Premier League. And well, he also met the love of his life, and now they have a son together. Without a doubt, we can all agree he is a true inspiration to many. On the other hand, he truly deserves all the success he has today. Anyway, what do you think about this story? Can De Bruyne reach Messi and Ronaldo's levels of success? Only time will tell. For more amazing football videos, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.